Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our December regular board meeting. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Heisel? Here. Okay, and Mr. Ture? Here. Secretaries, aye. Dr. Hall? Here. Okay, at this moment we will welcome our good news report, and I believe we have a choral presentation. So I'd like for our chorus to come forward. They already did it. I understand that we've already had a selection, but well, we were told some minutes from. <laughs> we had a section selection already. We'll, we'll do another one. You, uh, I had kids that left because we thought we were done at six thirty, so I apologize. Sure. Sure. Um. Whoa. Hello. Thanks, Austin. Um. This is part of Cavaliers and Faces. That's what we could get on a Tuesday night with other commitments for other things. Um, I, if you don't know much about the show choirs here, we're usually national caliber, and we will be again this year. Um, we'll be competing. Our first competition is in 30 days. They're very excited about that, and I'm a little scared, but we're good. We're good. Um, We'll be competing in Mount Zion. I'll just tell you some of the places. We're competing in Mount Zion, Illinois this year. We're going to Danville, Illinois. We're going to Troy, Missouri. We're going to Glenwood, Chatham. They're my brains, by the way. And Springfield and Mundelein, hopefully. Um, but what we've done is the music that you've heard earlier tonight and what we're going to do again here is holiday music that happened on our Christmas concert already. We can do, sa yeah, I was thinking save the world. You want to do that? Oh, because I've got a mixed group. Never mind. All right, we're going to do the holiday stuff. So we'll do two more Christmas carols, and they're repeats of ones we've done already here. So let's do Ding Dong Merrily and High first. Ready? It's your favorite. <laughs> Ding dong merrily on high in heaven up. Ask you which ones do you go? What one do you want to do? Last one. Carol of the Bells. Carol of the Bells again? 
Well, they just heard that one. All right, we're going to do Carol of the Bells again because they won. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I'm Mr. Moore, the director of the group. I don't think I actually said that. Um, I, and I do want to let you know that normally these kids are in on risers, and there's about at least twice as many of them. And we're doing singing and dancing and all that uh, that goes along with it. And so if you want to see some of that, come to some of our concerts, and it's really exciting, or travel with us. So cool. I'm done. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much to the award-winning show choir group. Thank you. Let's give our choir singers one more round of applause. They did an excellent job. <laughs> Takes skill to sing like that. <laughs> okay, we're going to move right into our public comment section of the board meeting. Last call for public comment. Okay, this time I'd like to call forward Miss Mary Bragg, who's commenting on the holidays. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. On behalf of the Crete Money Education Association, we just want to wish the board, the administration, and all of our community and family members a safe and happy holiday season and time for everyone to refresh and get ready for the great end of the school year, that second semester. Yes. Thank you. Looking forward, looking forward to <laughs> successful in all those tests and great test scores. Right. All right. <laughs> OK. He can um, turn in the form ap right after he's done.
close it. Okay. Uh, you have to forgive me. Uh, I didn't quite know the procedure. Uh, my name is Keith Griffin. I'm a trustee from University Park. Uh, I've come to a, a number of meetings and I haven't said anything. But I want to thank uh, the board for standing tall. Uh, a number of times I've been here and I've heard the board call out their names and everything else and I think it's a travesty. But Ms. Hall, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Brown, and Ms. Sanders, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. You're doing what Mega Evers and Dr. King did. So I'm telling you all, hang tough, stay tough. Anything I can do, I will avail myself to it. So all I'm telling you, thank you for a good job, and uh, God bless you. You all have a good holiday. Thank you. Moving forward, can I have a motion to open our public hearing on the 2014 tax levy? Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Ture. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Henderson? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Heisel? Aye. And Secretary, oh, Mr. Ture, I'm sorry. Aye. Secretary's aye, Dr. Hall? Aye. Our public hearing is now open. We want to move the board down to the seats so that they can see the presentation from Dr. Williams, please. Alrighty. Okay, good evening everyone. I'm Ann Williams and I'll be providing a brief overview of our 2014 tax levy. First I'd like to start with just providing you with a brief definition of the levy in comparison to the extension. The tax levy is actually a request it's an estimate of what we anticipate will be extended. So the extension is the actual amount to be raised in property taxes for the district, whereas the levy is the requested amount to be asked for. It's important to remember as we go through this process that school districts will receive no more than they request and no more than we are entitled to by law. This slide depicts exactly that. Um, it's our tax levy versus our extension for the past five years. As you can see, the levy, the amount requested, is shown in blue, and the extension is shown in gold. And as you can see, every year we have requested more than we've actually received. You may be asking yourself, well, why do we repeatedly do that? Because there are many unknown factors in the process. Uh, this slide lists, lists the factors that we know and the things that we don't know. We know how much our extension was last year. 36.1 million excluding bonds. We know what the rate of inflation is and we use the consumer price index as an indicator of the rate of inflation. So for this year we're using 1.5 percent. So we know those factors and we can calculate what the maximum extension would be for the existing property. But we don't know the value of property as, as it relates to the equalized assessed valuation. We won't have that information until spring 
We also won't know the new property value, the expiring TIFs, annexations, or the new limiting rate. So all of those factors are unknown until well after we estimate the tax levy. So you may be asking yourself, as a taxpayer, is there any protection since you're asking for so much? And the answer is yes. The property tax extension limitation law limits the growth of property taxes for our district. So for our district, we'll receive an increase of, as I stated earlier, 1.5% for the aggregate property in our district. So regardless of how much money we request, we're only going to get what we're entitled to by law. In this case, 1.5% even though we're going to ask for roughly 10%. This slide shows you the consumer price index history going back to 2006. And as I stated, the determining factor is the consumer price index or 5%, whichever is less. So as you can see, we haven't hit the cap of 5% um, since prior to 2006. So this year we'll be using 1.5% as indicated in the last column. If you look at 2009, that's right when the Great Recession hit, and you can see that the rate of inflation was actually a tenth of a percent at that time. This slide shows you the history of our property values as it relates to the equalized assessed valuation and the new property with the existing property shown in blue and the new property shown in gold at the top. As you can see, new property is a very small portion of the total property value. If you look at 2010, you can see this number went up a little bit. That's because we had a large TIF in University Park that expired and came back onto the tax roll. So we saw a significant increase there. But if you look at the past four years, you'll see that the new property growth is minimal, being less than 1% of the total value each year. Uh, people often ask, if my property value is going down, why are, my tax, why, is, why are my taxes going up? Well, there's an inverse relationship between tax rates and property values. So when your property values go, go down, your tax rate goes up to offset for that decline. And that is further indicated on this slide. The information in the top is what I showed on the previous slide for the values, and the information on the bottom is the tax rates. And as you can see, as the uh, property values, if you look from 2011 to 2014 estimate, as the property values are going down, the rates are going up. So there's an inverse relationship between the two. So what are we asking for this year? Um, this is our tax levy request by fund, a subtotal of the capped funds, the funds that are protected by the property tax extension law that I mentioned earlier, we're requesting $39.7 million. Our bond and interest levy is another $11.7 million for a total of $51.4 million. Well, you may be asking yourself, what does that equate to? At the end of the day, that equates to roughly $589,000 or a 1.63% increase. Now you may recall I said 1.5, there's that new property piece that we don't know, so that's an estimate, but we're expecting the 1.63% increase, which equates to roughly $589,000 over what we received last year, or I should say in tax year 2013. Uh, this is a slide that we saw earlier, but I've added on the 2014 data here at the end. So we're looking to request roughly $39.7 million, but we're actually going to receive $36.7 million. How does this impact you as an individual taxpayer? If your home is valued at roughly $150,000, um, your equalized assessed valuation, also known as your EAV, is roughly a third of that. So I'm estimating that at $50,000 you're looking at an increase of roughly $215 on your next tax bill. Now, we have spoke about how much it will increase in totality. So we're looking at an increase of 1.5% in totality, but your bill may increase at a different rate. And there are two reasons why that may occur. First, we have to remember that the Board of Education approved more than $1 million in tax relief to its taxpayers during 2012 and 2013. 
It was 525,000 each year, each of those two years. Additionally, your individual property assessment may have increased at a higher rate than the district as a whole. So if your property didn't decrease in value as much as the other properties did, your property may be a larger piece of the overall pie, which means that your taxes may increase at a higher rate. In summary, the 2014 tax levy extension will include an inflationary increase of 1.5% for existing property. School districts in the state of Illinois are required, or I shouldn't say required, I should say recommended to levy more than we will actually receive to account for the unknown factors in the process. We're expecting to receive an increase of 589,000 or 1.63% over the prior year. And it's also important to remember that property taxes are the only reliable revenue increase that we receive each year. If you recall from my budget presentations, our state revenue is declining, our federal revenue is declining. The only thing we can consistently count on some increase in is property taxes. Now, if you have a question regarding your individual property assessment, because that's specific to your personal bill, you would need to contact the Will County Assessor regarding that and I do have that information here for you as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have at this time regarding the district's tax levy. Yes? I don't understand how it can only go by, up by 1.5. I didn't Excuse understand what, how it Can you go to the podium, please? Excuse me. Oh. Yeah, for us, that is for us. <laughs> Sorry. all this fuss. <laughs> exercise. Musical chairs. The question that I have, and either you went over it too quickly or just didn't make any sense to me, if you can only go up by one and a half percent, how can you estimate that you're going to go up by 1.63 percent? Isn't it going to cap at 1.5 percent? I don't understand what. Yes, the existing property is going to cap at a one and a half percent increase for the entire equalized assessed value of all of the property within the district boundaries. But that doesn't take into consideration the new property. So that's where you get that slight difference. So then you're expecting the estimated value to go up higher and then it will go back down on that, that new estimated value to 1.5%? No. Um, before we get through with this answer, I, I think the board needs to be able to open public comments officially so we can uh -huh. go. Not that your question is, but we just want to make sure we go about this to the right. It's okay. We just wanted to make sure we have on record that we have open public comment for the tax levy. Okay. Okay. Um, so for the existing property, the increase will be 1.5%. That doesn't take into consideration the new property. So it's not capped, the new property? Is that what you're saying? The new property is not capped, no. Okay. That explains it for me. Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. Again, public comment for the tax levy is now open. If anyone else has a comment or question, please do come forward to the microphone at this time. May I have a motion to close the public hearing on the 2014 tax levy? Moved. Moved by Mr. Anderson. Second. Second by Mr. Heisel. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Um, it was approved by Mr. Anderson. Moved by Mr. Anderson, second by Mr. Heisel. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, our public hearing on a 2014 tax levy is officially closed. Moving forward to administrative Updates, Superintendent Cunningham. 
can I just make one quick sure. comment on the, the levy? First of all, I just want to thank you, Dr. Williams. Uh, you know, Bob, when he was our business manager, did an excellent job presenting, making things difficult, really easy for the, the public to understand. And you just came in and pretty much doing the same thing. So good job, good effort, good job for just making something real difficult, real easy for the public as far as conveying the tax levy to the public and understanding what it's all about. So thank you, Dr. Williams, for being cl clear, concise, and comprehensive on the explanation of the tax levy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Cunningham, administrative updates. For our administrative updates this month, well, sorry about that, it didn't mean to be so loud. Um, we uh, were blessed to have the opportunity to go to the I conference and have some uh, professional development. And what we wanted to do was to be able to give a quick two-minute update. It's not going to go through every little detail that we have, but uh, each one of our administrators will kind of give you an update of some of the sessions that they saw and some of the things that uh, were very important to them. I'll start real quick with um, a session over um, actual mission and mission statements uh, for districts and how they fit together. Uh, one of the uh, conference sessions went over it very clearly, at least clearly for me, and they talked about it being kind of a, a, an umbrella for the district. Uh, the mission and the mission statement being the fabric of the umbrella, it, it holds everything together. And the value statements of the district being the ribs of that uh, umbrella and the goals being the handle so that you have it to cover the entire district. It, it wasn't like um, rocket science to figure out how important that is to be able to cover your district with your uh, vision, mission, and goals. And they did a very nice job of explaining it so each and every district would have an opportunity to, uh, to do that. They also talked about, um, in, in the other session that we went to, we talked about um, ways to make sure that we answered our public comments properly as, as administrators and board members. The first thing was to make sure that we listened and listened well. And the next was to direct and to make sure that we directed them to the proper person. And it was to make sure that we didn't make any promises or anything like that and that um, we after that, make sure we contacted that administrator, whether that be the superintendent for board members or for me, um, the building uh, principal or, or the principal or the administrator in charge of that option. I also went to a, um, a session on reduction of um, workman's comp, and I did that to help our district uh, focus on ways for us to move forward. And the key to that was making sure that we, they had a legal team that was together, an understanding of how they would work together, and a uh, pre-employment physical along with a pre-informant screening that worked for most of the employees. These things are all options for this district, and I'll be working with our HR to see what parts of that that we can put in together. I've also asked that district to come in and, and meet with our, um, with our cabinet. And after the first of the year, we expect to be able to do that. I'll pass that on for me to uh, Mr. Neal, if you're ready. Certainly. Most of the updates uh, and the sessions that I went to had to deal with either uh, a legislative update or legal issues, uh, not necessarily limited to human resources, but to the district as a whole. And. Uh, Many of the issues that I heard in all of the sessions uh, surrounded the, the SB 16 legislation uh, regarding the shift in school funding from some districts uh, away from uh, districts that have traditionally uh, perhaps received uh, a higher property tax revenue and toward those who can't uh, receive as much in property taxes. Uh, while this district would tend to benefit from that legislation, it isn't necessarily uh, the way we all want to see it happen by uh, having other districts lose funding uh, for some to, to gain. Uh, but that was a big piece of the uh, legislative piece and also uh, with the recent elections and the uh, change in the composition of uh, the governor's mansion as well as the uh, some uh, 
some changes in the legislature, just some uncertainty over what may be forthcoming with regard to education. And uh, there wasn't much guidance given, but just, uh, again, some of that uncertainty was reinforced. Uh, as far as the legal updates, uh, there's quite a few things out there that stand to, uh, you know, in, uh, to uh, affect us. And uh, so, you know, I'll be looking into a lot of that. A big piece of what I went to was also collective bargaining and looking at uh, some different ways to try to uh, uh, ensure that people are properly compensated, but in a way that the district can afford. And uh, a lot of ideas presented by other districts that, uh, you know, we have discussed some in the cabinet, and we'd like to uh, explore a little further as we get ready to negotiate with both of our uh, collective bargaining units over the next year. And uh, the last one I went to uh, had to do with Okay, thank you. Shut up, Lyle. <laughs> it was just getting good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I went to uh, sessions that focus, of course, on uh, curriculum and instruction, common core standards, um, school improvement and school accountability, and teacher evaluation. Uh, of the, the two sessions that I really found valuable was uh, one was on the whole idea of student growth and teacher evaluation, uh, what board members should know. And um, really, I think the big points out of this were that um, we need to keep the board updated on our work in that area, and, and Mr. Neal and I are working along with uh, our, our association president on that. So we want to make sure that the uh, board is updated because really any changes to evaluation mean changes to our contract. Um, Two key actions that I thought were really important that came out of the presentation, these were two key actions that districts can take, is that one, we should schedule release time for professional learning communities to do work so teachers can work together around curriculum and assessment. And the other thing is that we uh, should support teachers with instructional coaching that is pertaining to their uh, job assignment. Um, so that's kind of ongoing. Um, the other thing is that in the evaluation process, we should make sure that administrators spend a lot of time observing in classrooms, focusing on what students are doing as opposed to what teachers are doing, and there needs to be much more time for teachers and administrators to have good conversations about instructional practices. And then the, the second important one that I went to was on something called Illinois Differentiated Accountability Model. So, you know, when I stand up in the fall every year and tell you, used to tell you about AYP and status and all those wonderful things, the, uh, a state level group is now coming up with a new model. It's actually a concept right now, um, but it's around key principles that districts are embracing accountability and continuous improvement, which we always do. Um, but it's really about comparing performance against yourself as opposed to comparing it to others or to a standard. Um, identifying factors that improve us and it's aligned to educator accountability because it's a 70-30 model just as our teacher evaluation model is practice and student growth. Thank you ma'am. Ms. Vince? Okay, I attended two sessions. Uh, one had to do with community engagement, informing the community, um, and it talked about posting our student learning results on the district website and key questions that you want to ask yourself as a board is how accessible is our district performance data? Uh, it should be kept simple, it should be upfront where the audience does not have to search for it and we want to answer some key questions such as how are we doing compared to others, our neighboring districts. The second session that I attended, which I felt was very valuable, it was on engaging families. And it talked about how schools cannot do it alone. It talked about school pride. Are we proud of our schools? And does our school board showcase that pride? It talked about parent involvement, um, improving our climate and culture. The presenters were uh, Proviso Township High School District 209, and they recently implemented a character education program that they were seeing success with. And character education, along with PBIS, it's kind of like a supplement, bridges that gap between what you teach in elementary school 
and what you sometimes lose at the secondary level. And even though the students are teenagers, you still need to teach why it's important to be a good neighbor. What is your role in society? That you really do owe the world something. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Dr. Williams? Yes, I, um, my focus was on facilities and bonds. I attended two sessions on facilities. Uh, one spoke about the need to audit the condition of your facilities, so I was proud to know that our district had already did that. Um, they focused on how to evaluate your existing maintenance budget and identify creative funding sources for future projects. So we will be looking into some of those in the near future. I also attended a session on selling bonds under the new municipal rule, and that will impact us as we move forward um, with the building of the new elementary school. So there was a lot of good information provided there. And our current um, bond underwriter, William Blair, did present as part of that presentation. Um, finally, I actually presented, on a, presented a session entitled Making Sense of Talking Dollars, and it spoke to the board's financial responsibility to the community. And the session was targeting new board members, and it was the third year that we have put that session on. So um, as always, it was an enjoyable conference, and I took a lot of good information away that I'll bring back to our school district. Thank you, ma'am. Again, I'd like to thank the Board of Education for allowing us to have this professional development. It, it, it strengthens the district. It just does. Now, besides just being able to go to this professional development system, we want to start presenting. Uh, Dr. Williams was able to present this year with IASBO. I've challenged our high school principal to present on some of the wonderful programs that we have at this high school. We need to make sure that we are known. I've also talked to um, Ms. Spence a little bit about maybe being able to um, have a presentation next that includes all of those character education sections that she was talking about. Together, all of that work helps us to improve. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to all of our administrators for providing us with the summary, and I'm pretty sure that what you all have learned, we will be seeing a lot of those things in place. Thank you. Moving on to student affairs, Mrs. Monica Spence. Thank you. The following Freedom of Information requests have been received. I have reported the results and status of those requests. We have one from Dr. Vincent Miles out of Champaign, Illinois, an electronic request received on December 3, 2014. The request is for closing records for each debt issuance defined as a bond, referendum building bond, fire prevention and safety bond, tort judgment bond, working cash fund bond, funding bond, alternate revenue bond, revenue bond, refunding bond, and other types of long-term debt. Two, a debt certificate. Three, a tax anticipation warrant or note. And four, other miscellaneous debt instruments of this public body since January 1st, 1984 through today, which was December 3rd. The status of this request, a response was sent on December 9th, 2014, and the response was actually a denial based on the request was unduly burdensome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving forward, curriculum, Mrs. Laura Hirsch. Uh, I wanted to uh, give the board an update on park testing for our high school. Um, on Monday, December 1st, at the very end of the day, we received uh, information from the Illinois State Board of Education that they were going to provide um, high schools with options for park testing. Uh, the original mandate was that we would test students who are currently enrolled in English 3 and Algebra 2, which are mostly our junior students. Um, but now they were going to offer us options uh, that we could either stay with that or we could uh, decide to test students enrolled in English 2 and Geometry, which are primarily our sophomores, or test students enrolled in English 1 and Algebra 1, which are primarily our freshmen. Um, they gave us uh, four days to make a decision, so we uh, surveyed the um, 
suburban curriculum directors and had some internal discussions. And we made the decision that we would choose to test um, students enrolled in English 1 and Algebra 1, which are primarily our, our freshmen. And the reason that we decided to do that, we had actually, I thought, five pretty good reasons for that. Um, first of all, our juniors are all scheduled to take the statewide ACT on March 3rd, and that's an important test for them. Uh, they also take, some of our juniors take AP tests in May, and this would allow teachers to prepare them for those exams as opposed to preparing them for a park test. Um, the park assessment, if we added that to our juniors or had our juniors do that, that really puts them in a situation of being over-tested because park was scheduled to, scheduled to begin on March 9th, so they would be going directly from ACT right into park. Um, our ACT test is scheduled six weeks earlier than it has been, so we want to give them that extra time to prepare. And also we felt that testing freshmen allows us to now establish a cohort of students that we can follow through the park assessment. If we tested juniors, they would take it once and that would be the last time they would take it. So it really is adding to that idea of establishing a baseline and a baseline group. So uh, we did inform the state that we would be testing our freshmen on the park exam this spring. Thank you. Any questions from board members? Okay, next. Just good job. Good job. AP Honorable. And now, another good news report. Um, we received information that for the second consecutive year, Crete Money High School has earned recognition by the College Board for um, advanced placement exams. Um, it's the fifth annual report, so they've been doing this for five years, and we were one out of 547 school districts in the U.S. and Canada that was recognized and one of 26 schools in the uh, state of Illinois. And we, so <laughs> there's our, our high school principal wore his celebratory sweater tonight for this reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we did receive recognition in three categories. Um, we have 30% uh, or greater enrollment in on our AP classes and tests of uh, American Indian, African American, and Hispanic Latino students. Um, we have 30% or greater enrollment of students who qualify for free and reduced lunch, and we have a, a achieved the honor for multiple years. And from our academic report in the spring, I, I attach the same graph that I, or chart that I used then, but we've increased our enrollment in AP courses uh, from thir uh, 12, 13 to 13, 14 by 30 students. And again, the percentage of students who earned a score of higher, of three or higher on the AP exam was up another 5% for a 20% increase over two years. Thank you, that is absolutely wonderful news. It's awesome. Great. Hats off to our, our principal, our teachers, and our students who continue to bring um, notoriety to our school district and our high school. Thank you. I hate as to jump. well as our curriculum department. Excellent, excellent job. I'd just like um, Ms. Hirsch to explain again real fast because she went over it. Um, so what you're saying is we have more students in, we're getting more students and more students into AP program every year, and we're continuing to pass those exams by increasing the high, uh, percentages of students who are, who are passing. Correct, and this current school year, we actually offer an AP class now at the freshman level, and it's open to all freshmen kind of as a, uh, anyone can, can take the course, prove themselves, and then it opens the enrollment into future AP courses for students at younger grades. That's outstanding. Thank you. Uh, I said I was going to say a word, but I have to say this. <coughs> uh, I want to commend the curriculum department because uh, I don't know if it was two or three years ago that we had the discussion about opening up these classes. It used to be a time in this environment that it was only for a select few and I think when we do not challenge students more students some that we might not expect could be successful in the practice uh, and look at what we're seeing now we're seeing that we are making it available to more students and more students are showing us that they did have or earn the right to be in this process so I think um, in relationship to what, what the gentleman just said here earlier uh, we have to think innovative, we have to think different. It's not always gonna please everyone, 
but it's uh, because it makes the, the class smaller or maybe a few who are accustomed to getting in the classes aren't this time because we're opening it. It becomes a wider um, perspective. So I'm very, very proud to actually see that the data shows that we did something uh, and I mean, there was a lot of back and forth, I remember up here, as to you know how that was going to play out, but I think it, it is proven and it's really good to see a yielded result in something uh, as it relates to student achievement. So thank you very much. Yeah, I'd just like to say to Dr. Harden, uh, what, is, what is a fancy sweater? Uh, <laughs> Uh, continue a good work. You have a great foundation that was laid here by your predecessor. And uh, please continue. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hirsch, for your presentations. Moving on to board updates. Um, as mentioned earlier um, by our administrators, um, the board, as well as our district administrators, participated in this year's joint annual conference. Over 9,000 individuals attended um, the 2014 joint annual conference, which consists of the Illinois Association of School Boards, Illinois Association of School Administrators, and Illinois Association of School Business Officials. Um, I have gone to this this conference every year being a board member and I've said it before that I absolutely support board members partaking in professional development. Um, this board attends the state um, annual conference as well as the national annual conference and I do believe that it is very important that board members are educated in order to sit in these seats. There's a lot that we have to know and understand and a lot of that comes from going to seminars and workshops and conferences. Um, so our board did attend this year's um, conference, excuse me. So I'm gonna ask our board members to just give a brief summary. I already told them ahead of time, two minutes each, <laughs> to just share um, something that uh, stuck with you uh, this year's um, conference and something that you would like to share with the rest of the board members. So I am going to start to my right with Mr. Anderson. Are you ready? How about Mr. Heisel? Okay, I'll give him time. <clears throat> um, this is my 18th or 19th trip down there for this conference. Um, and in all that time, I've learned to, to focus. When it, so I go primarily for the legislative uh, session and updates and to speak with individuals who are involved with the General Assembly <clears throat> and the State Board of Ed. And one of the things that hit me was this year is that in the uh, legislative session, uh, none of the heavy hitters were there this year. It was staff members. And the staffers, Everybody looks at that and says, well, they've been told what to say, so we, can, we aren't expecting too much. But if you get a hold of them outside the session, it's kind of fun. And I had three areas that I was really concentrating on, and it was Senate Bill 16, mm -hmm. uh, the TRS piece of uh, what the districts would have to pay, and the income tax. Mm -hmm. Basically what I found out was in talking to the staffers, you get a different answer from mm -hmm. each one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and some said we'll take care of it in the veto session. Others said, uh, "Don't worry about it." Mm -hmm. As Senate Bill 16 may come back in the regular session because they passed it by in the veto session, but it will not be in the same form, mm -hmm. which is something we've heard over and over yeah, again. Forever. The uh, TRS piece, we can expect that the districts will be paying a uh, greater share of TRS in the future after the January session. And the income tax, nobody really wanted to commit to it, uh, which tells me that because they don't want to commit to it, that in January it will probably become permanent. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, the school districts will take a far greater hit than we already have. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm good to go now, Madam President, if that's okay. You ready? <laughs> okay. I had to pull up my notes. Uh, but I um, also, as my colleague, I enjoyed uh, my time there uh, this year and was able to get a lot of good information. <clears throat> but I also, I don't think we were in the same meeting, but they had similar meetings. 
in reference to <clears throat> uh, legislative issues that were going to be impacting our school districts. And uh, in the meeting that I was in, we, they were talking about Senate Bill 16. They were also talking about uh, Senate Bill uh, 3673, uh, which basically deals with some of the same issues as far as the funding for public schools and the funding for school districts. And um, there were some actual legislators there at, at my session, uh, but uh, they were still not really able to answer a lot of the questions because of the fact that no one really knows how things are going to go until after a new governor is sworn in and then he begins to move forward. Um, I guess one good thing, um, I do know some people who are a part of his um, initial strategy um, um, committee, if you will, especially those dealing with education. So that kind of sort of helps us get a, a quicker uh, answer to some things um, than maybe most districts. So um, we just uh, are happy about that. But we, we have to be very careful uh, and pay close attention uh, to what's going on and make sure that we're continuing to be in the loop because of just some of the information that they were sharing because they didn't know. So because they didn't know, it's kind of kind of hard for us to actually say or to know for sure exactly how things are going to go. So we have to make sure we continue to press our legislators um, for what we need and to make sure we stay in constant contact with them. Absolutely. Mr. Ture. Hello. <laughs> Okay, I attended a um, couple of sessions. The one that I thought was most uh, near and dear to my heart and important to me was the what is trending now in special education law. Um, and we talked about the, the biggest trend right now is bullying, and not just bullying, but cyberbullying. There's some new laws out there on it. Uh, and uh, this presentation was by our law firm, and they promised to email me further information, which hasn't arrived yet. Hint, hint, uh, uh, Mr. Cunningham. Uh, so uh, anyway, the nexus of it was that we, we need uh, there's a there there's a site out there, or an application, I think they call it an app. Uh, I can barely make a phone call. So, But anyway, this thing's called an app, and it's called Yik Yak. It's it's uh, bad news out there. It's uh, it's a bullying device. Uh, our IT people should be able to block it for about a 10 mile radius. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll we'll look into that if we haven't already. They talked about our policy, making sure that it uh, it included cyberbullying in the policy. Cyber manager. They recommended two cyber managers per school, one of each sex. Uh, plus also anonymous reporting of cyberbullying, and investigating of all uh, accusations, and shoot for a 10-day window to have the accusations uh, either substantiated or, or dismissed. Uh, talked about the uh, website, making sure we have it on the website and in the handbook, and evaluate every two years minimum. Uh, there's an uptick on bullying cases throughout the United States and an uh, uptick, uptick on suits for against school districts. And the most important thing they talked about was follow-up. System in place to follow up on bullying after settled and have a system in place to monitor ongoing from then on. So I thought this session was very, very well, very good session, and uh, I enjoyed it very much. I also attended a communicating, engaging, engagement, what's working. We talked about uh, strategies, strategic plan, and I thought that one good idea they pulled out of there, their strategic plan is a three-minute video. It's not, uh, it's not a binder to read. It's, it's, a, it's a video, it's out there, and parents can go to it and just watch the video. I thought it was a, a good idea. If we don't have that, we might look into making a short video talking about our strategic plan so uh, it'll uh, capture the attention of the parents and all the other stakeholders. That's a summary of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ture. I, I also heard about that, and I think that is uh, a present-day way of communicating our plan to our public, and I do agree with that. Thanks. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Dr. Hall. <clears throat> well, there was various financial 
sessions that I tried to get into and went to quite a few. But one that just kind of stood out above others was a financial s session that was titled Staying Out of the Headlines, Staying Out of the News in a Negative Way. And it just kind of covered quite a few things as being related to financial issues. And I, I learned quite a bit, quite a bit from that particular session. Uh, how our credit is, is rated on, you know, periodically being monitored all the time. And one thing that stood out with the one particular credit rating firm, Standard & Poor, known as S&P, and they have like 12 ratings all the way from AAA to D, and we are really, really close to that AAA. So I feel pretty good about that. And also one of the things that's dear to my heart is how we borrow money, uh, specifically selling bonds. There was a good topic on selling bonds to the point that it had me to look at <clears throat> our bond debt policy to review, to review it in such a manner to look at it and, and do something about it to make it better. So we are in the process of doing that and hopefully next month it can come to the board for a full approval. And one of the other things, and lastly, this is all I'm gonna talk about is there's other policies that we can use, policies and procedures. As you know, the district is, is driven by the board policies and there is quite a few policies that we can look to implement that would keep us out of the headlines as far as the IRS is concerned. I, I, you know, when you talk about the IRS, I'm like, that kind of scared me. So I'll be bringing some things to the policy committee to review, to look at, and hopefully we could implement some of the recommendation policies that were shared at that particular session. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Brown, Mr. Sanders. So I'll just piggyback off of what Mr. Brown indicated. Um, I actually attended a board policy, maintaining the board policy uh, manual. <clears throat> and as Mr. Brown stated, it is the governing uh, document, which happens to be a working document in process on an ongoing basis. But I think it uh, guides, you know, your hiring, your, I mean, just all, all realms of school district uh, business. So um, this particular workshop just stressed again the work, the importance of keeping it updated. And as they didn't stress so much uh, what you said, Mr. Brown, uh, keeping us out of the headlines. But I think it certainly can be uh, inferred that if the policies, if people have uh, the information and the expectation through the policies and we follow them, uh, we're more likely to be obviously successful and whether it be financial um, or what have you. So that was, uh, and I think we, we're doing a great job, uh, particularly this year, Mr. Cunningham, uh, kudos to you and your team, Mrs. Spence, on just helping us to revise the process uh, for a clearer transparency. And I kind of bragged about that in, <coughs> in our uh, session, so I'm kind of proud of, <laughs> of what we're doing. People gasp a little bit. Uh, at what it is that we're doing. So I'm, I'm thankful that we stood out as 201 in that area. Uh, the other uh, session I went to because it was, uh, as Mr. Ture stated, dear to me, uh, wanting to get a clear understanding of the RTI. Um, and this particular workshop talked about how to audit, uh, how we should as, a, as board members audit the data uh, or encourage the administration, I should say, to audit this data uh, and again to sustain uh, implementation of uh, things that are going to either improve uh, what is happening in RTI for student success. It's not enough to just say we have RTI programs and what are they doing uh, and not just every year but uh, periodically uh, they encouraged us as board members to ask about this and I think Laura you kind of said it earlier there's going to be a system uh, going forward where you are. It's in some class you attended or workshop you attended, they said you should come to the board more regularly. And I have to say, again, it's talking to a couple of parents a few weeks ago about this very thing. And if people don't realize why the money is spent, 
in certain areas, particularly RTI or if it's the need for us to have additional staff members. Um, but why it's significant and why we expend the amounts of money that is spent in, um, in this, you know, in RTI or any interventions whatsoever. And finally, just real briefly, the Common Core uh, standards talk the talk. I think we hear so much about it. Uh, I know I've heard about it to, to, to no end as a board member, but I think they uh, say to us as members that we should be able to have a sit down coffee uh, based on the data and the information. You know, they pulled up the, uh, how we can go and find the, the data on it, but that we should be able to have regular, tangible, palpable uh, conversations with people about it because it's just that important for them to actually buy into it so that we are successful, or sh should I say the, the students are successful. So they said it's not enough to just talk the talk, report the data, but that we communicate it well to individuals, uh, namely our stakeholders and parents and students, uh, so that we might maintain or, uh, or attain, rather, an, a successful uh, outcome. All right, thank you, Mrs. Sanders. Um, I will briefly state um, a couple of um, things um, that I pulled from some seminars that I participated in. Um, Mr. Brown mentioned um, staying out of the news. Um, I got the same message, but more so being in the news for the right reasons and um, strategies that boards can use in order to reduce time, manpower, and money that is spent um, submitting uh, FOIA, the, the responses to FOIA requests, or even um, the filings of lawsuits with districts. And uh, one of the things that was talked about was the fact that the board can make a conscious effort to educate the public to the extent allowable by law. Um, of, of course, there's certain things that the board cannot disclose to the public for legal reasons, um, but on our end, we can put out information that will help people understand the operations of the school district. They talked about trying to avoid lawsuits, um, uh, what they deem frivolous FOIA requests. Um, we spend a lot of time and, and manpower fulfilling FOIA requests. And there's a lot of um, things that we can do where we can put out information for the public to understand um, what's going on in our school district. I also took part in a Senate Bill 16 presentation. Um, I will say that Senate Bill 16 um, in its current state is somewhat confusing. It's somewhat controversial um, to those who receive the information. It, there's a lot of talk about it um, from layman's all the way to the uh, General Assembly. Um, one thing we do know, and I think Tom mentioned this, is uh, as Senate Bill, Bill 16 stands currently, it is not in the form that would be um, presented for approval um, to our lawmakers. There's a lot of discussions that need to take place on it. Um, I think we all do agree that there needs to be some form of education funding reform in Illinois. Um, we just don't know right now how to come to that common place to agree on how it should go forth. Um, Senate Bill 16 uh, could cause some districts to lose money and some districts to gain money if there is no new money put into the pot and that as it stands now, that is not the case. Um, this board was going to have our administrators do a formal presentation on Senate Bill 16. However, after attending the I conference, as well as some uh, other workshops, we decided to pull that because we didn't want to put any type of speculations out about the bill and we want to wait to see what's going on with our lawmakers and how they're going to move forward with it. Another push, um, I don't know if you all have been hearing about Stand Up for Public Schools. Um, this is a nationwide um, push and um, it is something that was addressed at the National School Board Association conference earlier this year. And we kind of touched on it when we did our summary of that and uh, talked about how Magic Johnson um, was also supporting public schools. There's a lot of debate on whether charter schools are better than public schools. There's even some laws going on in Springfield concerning the charter school um, commission that's been formed by ISBE. So, um, 
That's a couple of things that um, I participated in, and I thank all of our board members for sharing your thoughts and uh, your summaries of what you attended. And again, we will continue to um, attend these events in order to get the information that we need in order to serve our public. Thank you. Moving forward. Um, I just want to find out if, as we have reported, uh, that a summarization of what it was that we learned, we communicate that, because I asked before we went to the conference that not just that we receive this information, but some of this be implemented. So for example, getting a report on the audits that you do for RTI, the data, because as Dr. Hall stated, in the uh, national conference, as a board member, you know, it's not always, especially not for me, the recommendation, no disrespect, of the administration, but it is of the information that combined with the proof that we need to move forward on this, the proof being the data, what you guys present to us as data, and showing uh, a, a, a progressive process and why we need to do X, Y, Z, and, and they encourage us that, well, they encourage members to make sure that you're looking at the data, not necessarily, as most people say, just, you know, um, we say yes, we say yes, but we say yes because we're confident that the data reflects um, the, the ultimate uh, uh, success story. So I, I would like to see that the, the, these things that uh, have been brought to the table this evening be somehow summarized and, and considered uh, to be put in practice, not just spoke about, please. I think it would be appropriate to request that we um, channel um, what we have brought back to the appropriate committees to um, you know, have a discussion regarding, and I know that we did that with the Education Committee earlier this year with the National School Board Association, um, brought some of those things and put them on the agenda and discussed them. So. I believe that would be the most appropriate way to make sure that we do address these issues. So and you want and, us and to individually go to the individual, not go, not channel the summarization to the superintendent. Just take it our own self. It it can be. However I'd be glad to have it. To <laughs> <laughs> send it. I'm just send it our ultimately, way. Ultimately, you know, for the discussion to take place, to channel it through the appropriate committees. I think it's important it. that. Um, you know, a lot of times when uh, they talk about the month of November and going to the I conference, every superintendent in the state is afraid that there are going to be 10,000 things bought back because there's so many outstanding uh, programs there. They're always afraid that it won't fit, it doesn't work, and we get off the beaten path. I think it's important that you guys give us the summaries and we make sure that we're enacting these things that we're already doing. There's so many things that are happening in our high school that are outstanding that nobody knows about. So many things that are happening in our middle schools, our elementary schools, uh, CSK, that people just don't know about, whether it's the sixth grade center or not. And we need to make sure we're, we're reporting those things to you and the stuff that you've uh, gathered, that we find a way to help report that what we're doing like it, better than it, or Maybe that's something that we consider as we go forward. Maybe not all at the same time, but together making sure that we're, we're moving forward. And I think that's why we all went to that professional development, why you authorized your administrators, and why y'all took your own personal time to go up there and learn these things. It's to move us forward. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, moving forward, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. Moved by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Anderson. Are there any questions or comments from board members? Okay. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Ture. Aye. Mr. Heisel. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Secretaries, aye. Dr. Hall? Aye.
someone tell me where the donations are, if you see them? Uh, no, no, I'm just looking forward. for the page. Let's see what we have. Did we have any? Where are we at? We're looking for donations so we can remit action. And we're going to do this. Starting on page 165. We didn't do it, did we? Actually, 166. Thank you. You're welcome. Vice President. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> <laughs> Madam President. <laughs> hey, we would like to acknowledge Mrs. Linda Zeno. From Principal Aaron Lane is thanking Mrs. Zeno for her donation of water to the fourth and fifth grade boys basketball team. Principal Lane would also like to acknowledge Mr. and Mrs. James Cooney for their generous monetary donation to the students at Crete Elementary. Principal Lane would also like to acknowledge Ms. Connor, Amanda Connor thanking her for arranging and organizing the holiday visit by Santa and Mrs. Claus to Crete Elementary, as well as the cookies and hot chocolate that were very popular with the students and the staff. Principal Brian Main would like to thank Family Video of Homewood for their generous donation of gift cards to the sixth grade center He'd also like to thank Kelly Agler, store director of Meyer. I believe that's the grocery store in Highland, Indiana. Thanking them for their donations of gift cards. He is also thanking Mr. and Mrs. Wafer at Ultimate Flavors Popcorn Shop in Stager for their donation of popcorn. And that completes our acknowledgement of donations. Moving on to our business department action reports, Dr. Williams. Thank you again. <clears throat> Included in your packet is information regarding the certificate of levy for 2004, 2014 tax year and related documents. Um, in accordance with Illinois law, a truth and taxation notice was published in the paper on December 3rd and a public hearing was held just prior to this business meeting. Um, as stated during the, the public hearing, the district is estimated to receive roughly 1.63% more in tax revenue in comparison to last year. Um, the preliminary figures for the equalized assessed value of property within our district show a decrease of 2.5%. So that's what we utilize to determine the tax levy and we are requesting approval for the levy at this time. Thank you, Dr. Williams. May I have a motion to approve the 2014 tax levy and related documentation? Move. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Brown. Any questions by board members? Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Heisel? Aye. Mr. Ture? Aye. Secretary's aye. Dr. Hall? Aye. Thank you. Dr. Hall, um, there was uh, something that was skipped over agenda item 10B, the presentation of board policies for oh, revision. My apologies. That was just the first read. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring that okay. to what page, Terry? Uh, what page is that? Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, we will complete um, our business action reports and we will retreat back <laughs> to that. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, reducing the final 2014 tax levy. Okay, um, during the public hearing, we discussed the, the need to levy more than we will actually, actually receive 
due to the unknown factors in the process. The next recommendation is a recommendation authorizing the reduction of the tax levy once the final extension is known. We over levied in the transportation fund, so the attached resolution states stipulates that the tax reduction would come from that fund and that fund alone so that the other funds aren't reduced. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion to approve the authori authorization to reduce final 2014 tax levy? So move. Moved by, by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Heisel. Any questions? Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Heisel? Aye. Mr. Ture? Aye. Secretary's aye. <coughs> Dr. Hall? Aye. Thank you. Brad Images? Yes. <clears throat> Included in your packet is a very short contract for class photography. Um, this is for the 2014 graduating class picture. Uh, this particular vendor has been used in the past and the, the building is pleased with the level of service that they provided. There is no cost to the district for this service. The high school will receive a complimentary framed photo and the class sponsor will receive two additional complimentary photos. So we are requesting approval for the class photography agreement as submitted. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the contract for grad images? Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Anderson. Any questions? I just want to know, did we, last year we asked, and probably you wouldn't know this, Ms. Uh, Dr. Williams, uh, if we did, I, I understand the same, it seems the same statement is being made that the high school staff then and is today satisfied with the service, but we had asked if they are, if we have options or choices as with any business uh, contract that we deal with, or did we seek, they, we asked last year that they sought um, uh, various bids, there are more than one company that offers the grad, grad, you know, for, uh, what do you call it, photography to us, various schools, and we also talked about the fact that the school themselves is saying that they aren't having an issue, but again, it was the year that I inquired about it, several parents had concerns about the pricing, because the school isn't paying anything for it, so we don't have necessarily a contract agreement, but I do feel like we should be concerned about the level of customer service that is extended to our students. So I'm going to ask again. I don't have a problem with approving it again, but I think we need to look into it and not just be so uh, complacent in the idea that there's no cost to us. There is a cost to us when people are dissatisfied. No problem. Mrs. Sanders, um, I was not aware that that was a request of the Board of Education. When these contracts were presented to me, I did ask about had we used them before and was the service, service satisfactory, and I was told it was. So I will definitely make a note um, to go back to them and let them know that we will be going to um, seek proposals, for lack of a better term, next year in preparation for um, the next recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. Just one quick question. <clears throat> I see that the proposed person that we are entering a contract that signed for October the 1st of 2014, is there any issues with that? That's on page 188, page 188 of 201. The signature is not there, but it says printed name and date signed and we enter the contract as of today, that's not a problem. That shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't pose a problem, should it? It shouldn't pose a problem because um, when I sign it, it will be dated today. Okay, so they signed it um, yeah. a couple months ago, yeah. and we're signing it today. Yes, it shouldn't be a problem. It's not valid until it's properly signed on both sides. Okay. This was brought to the Finance Committee. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
already. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Heisel? Aye. Mr. Ture? Aye. And secretaries, aye. Dr. Hall? Aye. Thank you, class photographer. Dr. Hall, I accidentally went to the next agenda item when I spoke before, so I presented class photography first instead of <laughs> grad images. I do apologize about that. Um, so I'm going to make a recommendation now on the grad images contract. That's okay. actually the one I was looking at. Yes, that's, that's, that's exactly yeah. correct. I, <laughs> I accidentally skipped over that one. Alrighty. This contract is actually for the graduation ceremony and they take pictures before, during, and, and after the graduation. They take some candid shots at, as well. This contract, as is the other one, there's no cost to the district. However, for this contract, the high school does receive a 50%, a 50 cent, I'm sorry, 50 cent rebate for every graduate that provides a valid address for them to send those photos home to them and hopefully um, have them pur purchase them after the fact. Okay, so technically we have approved the grad images on record. No, I, sa I, said, um, I said class photography. Did you restate grad images? I said grad images. Okay, yeah. so then that was my error. How would you mm -hmm. like me to proceed? Okay, so your description was just more specific for grad images. Because they're both photography, so I thought you were describing. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, that, was a, that was a mistake on my part. But yes, okay. the description for... Um, grad images includes the 50 cent rebate for every graduate that goes back to the school, the high school. Okay. So on record, we have approved the contract for grad images. So yeah. even though the descriptions have flip-flopped, we still need to approve uh, the contract for class photography. So can I have a motion to approve the contract for class photography? Moved. Moved by Mr. Anderson. Second. Second by Mr. Brown. Any questions? Can he come up here and take a picture of us for free? I'm sure I could work that out. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry Maybe about that. Maybe our board here. pictures for free. <laughs> okay. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Ture. Aye. Mr. Heisel. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Anderson. Aye. And secretaries, aye. Dr. Hall. Aye. Thank you. As promised, we shall move back to item 10B, presentation of board policies for revision. Mrs. Sanders. What page is it? I am I'm trying to find that out. I think it's Dr. I mean Mrs. Spence, right? I'm sorry? It's on the Mrs. board Spence update. Oh, All right. Okay. Okay. You okay with this or you need me to Ms. Spence? We're you okay just with that? doing the first read of the last set of policies from the policy committee meeting. That is correct. Okay. Do you want me to go through each page one? 80. No, um, we might want to, is there a suggestion that you have for this? It's just the first reads. Should we just go over the, maybe the minutes? So, right. Yeah, if we just go over the minutes. If you just review the minutes real quick for them. I don't remember what page that was on. The minutes? Uh, the, the minutes in here? Minutes. Yes. Yes, sir. From December 9th. I was looking at them earlier. It is page. You know what page? And just for clarification, can we not... The, it's available at the um, for people to review. Where are they reviewing it again? Um, those are all the policies are available on our website on our board policy page as they go up. So how are individuals? How do they know what we've reviewed? So what's up for uh, revision at this point? We had a list of policies from, what page was that? I think, I want to say 57, and I just want to make sure that I'm accurate. It was from, um, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Am I accurate? <laughs> From 57, from the press submittal of 57, we took all of all of those policies as they came and we reviewed each and every one of them uh, f for all of those that were required by law and it was just about everyone, if I remember correctly, Mr. Brown who was there also, everyone was really required by law. Those would be put on for first read so that anybody can check them on our website. And yeah. then there is, on that same website, the, pa the bottom of the page has the policy committee um, website, um, not website, but email address, just in case they had questions or concerns on any of them. Okay, so f just a suggestion. So for here, could it not be that we, for example, I'm just looking at one, say, uh, list uh, in the sub Actually starting, Kim, uh, actually starting from 26, that's where the first draft update is. So, yes, yeah, page 26. And we get, it goes pretty far out. Okay, so for example, this one subtopic is operational services, and it's board policy 4.45. So just simply to list, as far as here on a board meeting night, to list those items, and you've already captured them on the website, so for those who are reviewing them at their own leisure, we're, we're not going to sit here and read the policy, so no. the the ones that uh, will be recommended for a second read in the future are just the ones that are sub caption is, Does that make any sense? Uh, just to name them and the, the policy if someone is to read it on that night or is that too much? I don't think that's too much. Basically, we, we just have the numbers here and you're asking us to go from the numbers to actually having their titles next to them. Because even tonight, if somebody had a question, 4.45, uh, you could go home or go to what and review 4.45. So us listing those here would be significant enough to say this is what we're reviewing. And then you go and review it at your leisure. If you have any questions, then you go back to this website and and go to the email address. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We can. Yes, we can do that. It's just addition of those titles. Moving forward, right? Is that yeah? Because moving I forward. think a, a lay person, what is four zero four point four five? Uh, maybe they won't want to read. Uh, for some uh, financial person, yeah, I want to read about the operational. But m my guess is that most people, what is that? It's, it just looks. It's not uh, friendly. So if you put what it is uh, for somebody who might be interested in, as Mr. Teray said earlier, something about bullying because that's what they're dealing with. Well, what is the school district's policy on that? Uh, that's all I want to read, and maybe that's all they want to read, but if we have it listed, that's where they'll go to and address that specific concern. So that they don't have to go through each and every one of these policies that they're not interested in. Yeah, we can do that. That's a good point. Moving forward. So good for point. tonight, excuse me, do you want me to read through the titles? No, ma'am. No. Oops, did I jump too fast? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I, I, I will only say this, are these, can you find a way to put the caption, because it, the transparency part of it is, can you find a way to put, the, capture this and put it in writing as early as tomorrow to say this is what is in revision, this is what is re for review, because it, do, it doesn't matter for tonight, all we're saying is this is what's for the next so many days, 30 days until the next policy meeting is what is in review. So could we not just somebody go in and put 4.45 and what that is and, and put it in, um, well, we talked about that even to, to, to like put it in a news blurb uh, format because it's important, people want to know, can we not just do that? Is, uh, I, I think that's we it. We have a link on the, Natalie, don't we have a link on the, the website that says new policies where you can click and 
I think what she's asking us for is to make sure that each one of these new policies that are on the web page don't look like this. I don't know that they do, but making sure that there is a title, ne a label next to each and every one of them. Well, can I get clarity on this? As far as that part, I understand. But as far as the agenda that we're seeing here today and the agenda that the public is seeing, if we try to incorporate not only the number, the policy number, but the title and the subtitle, for example, 4.45, the title Operational Services, and then you have insufficient funds, checks, and debt recovery, do we want that to show up on the agenda? That would be, that's what I'm asking. Do we want this to show up as opposed to 4.45 PDF? Mm -hmm. Do we want this? The this, subcaption. All of that there. Because you're asking the question, what? For what us, is this okay for us with the 4.45? See, this is what the public is gonna see as well, right? Right. They're going to see it online, plus if but, they want to go on and see the agenda, they're going right. to see this part. I think what we were talking so. about was page 25, because if you look at page 25, if you roll back, it's yeah. just the numbers. It's just the numbers. And what we want to do is make sure that those numbers include the title, so there's no confusion, so that if you're only interested in one section, you can find that fairly quickly. And, and I'm good with that, but I'm just saying, for clarity's sake, as far as how the agenda is laid out electronically, do we want to keep it as is and not be so worthy? Word? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just keep the numbers as it is. You mean instead of putting all of this? All of this mm. in the agenda. Gotcha. gotcha. I because thought we were only talking about the page. I didn't think right. we were talking about it. Well, I'm we good. That's why page. I want this clarity on it. If, oh, okay. If, this clarity. Clarity. So he's just ahead. wondering if, if, again, the person who's going to board book public Joe or Sally Sue mm -hmm. is reading what we're seeing here. Yes. And that is, they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we certainly don't need to re be redundant. Okay. So that we get clarity on that as far as how it should look on the agendas. I think I understand that we will fill in on page 25, what's page 25? Besides the numbers, we'll have a title right next to it. Just, just there. Yes. Now, just since you're walking away, I wanna clarify. What, after the policy meeting, just for clarity, when there's a, for a revision, cannot those policies for time consumption, can those policies be immediately extracted to whatever page that says, up, uh, I don't know, uh, extra, extra, read all about it. There's uh, uh, new policies because from that time to today, even if someone had a question tonight, what is that? Because we're talking about the revisions. I would imagine somebody could have a question. Can we not have them out there because the last policy meeting was well, last week, right? So our time has dwindled down. Are we inclusive of the full amount of time that we're giving folk to actually have bite into this. So that lit, whatever you put out there, and I don't know what to call it, Natalie, something that, a banner or something. Well, we would, I think, if I may, we, we would do it very similarly to the public comment. I'll get them fixed. Um, tabs for, for public no. comment now, if you right. want to, if I may just direct everyone to the screen very quickly. It's on this the, is um, the um, Board of Education meetings. Board of Education meetings meetings and then over the public comment. It, it would look very much like the, for, under Board of Education, mm. where we list the new um, for public comment. You'll see that we have it under, uh, under tabs there. Oh, give me a break. Sorry about that. Um, the FAQs. Under, under our meeting tab, then there's public comment, and then there is public comment, FAQ. And then the way that that is tabbed 
Natalie, you similar. Actually, it could be a, a um, hyperlink that takes you right to the page on each one of the policies individually. And the only stuff that will come on those months will be those that we've done adjustments to. So you'll have, like what we did in October would be all those listed and, and listed by title. And if you wanted to look what we did in October, you just click it and you're right there so by title. Uh, Natalie, I thought, where well, we have them now, you know, because we have the we have the thing for our policy. No, no, we don't want to look up our existing. No, we we did that because we have the page and we have the email address that all of the people can get to us. Yes, sir. The process, yes, that is that does exist under Board of Education. Under board policies, you see there's a drop down there for process. Uh -huh. That is where that's been. So anybody who goes to policy now sees that the, there is a process and that there is the policy presentation underneath. And the email address if you have email. Okay, so we have yet to put the policy. Okay, so then you can come to you. Okay. So I, would suggest I will get that taken care of tomorrow. We'll get it started tomorrow. I know what you're saying now. An extra arm Yes. with the process after that. Maybe the next one being... Mm -hmm policies currently under review is mm -hmm. that what you're yeah. referring to, I, to by month with you, okay. i was talking this is like what you were doing all that going i mean it's that's a lot for a lot of people i was just saying when you go to cm 201 U's website and immediately what's the big thing that's what we talked about how policy is the governing aspect that's huge it's either the money or it's the policy so as soon as you see this district's website pull up the latest thing that's going on from tomorrow is the review process of policy. So can you not put a banner that says, go to this if you want to review uh, uh, every, whatever our board policy meetings are, a, a, a banner that says, check out our new policies because, and then you can refer them over to here, but at least say it right here for people to be reminded that this is your time. Otherwise, we, we, we haven't changed much if we don't put it in their face, is what I'm trying to say. If you have the expectation that, here's what you do, go to the Board of Education, Board, what was it, Board of, I forget what the tab mm -hmm. was, Board of Education, then go down, then go over, you know, I'm not saying, I mean, it is what it is, but we want them to go and look at the policies and to have a say. It's not gonna be good, and maybe if everybody doesn't say anything about it, that's fine, but at the end of the day, was it easy for them to access and A, know that it was there to have the feedback or conversation? You, I think you told me in the last policy meeting we only had one comment. comment. Yes. So, I mean, and maybe that's gonna be the norm, one comment, or, or maybe we had a, the, the end of all the comments with one particular issue, but I can't, imagine that we're only going to have one comment for the duration of all these policies that refer or reflect on people. Well, that's no problem. We, we can put an existing banner to, uh, to circulate until we think at such time that everyone has had a chance to look at it. But if you want more than that, we can certainly extend the communication effort to send something out and to do more media. No, just that. After the that. policy meeting, if we, if whenever you guys collect the Cherry does the meetings or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. summarize the meetings, and we just have that blurbage, you know, give people at least a week, because the week is, the following week is the week we're sitting here saying when we put them out, public comment should be something in, in should, public could public be. comment yes. should be something that they have reviewed through those policies, is all I'm saying. I understand. I think, I, I think together we'll, we can come up with something, and when I update the board on the FYI this week, I'll explain it to everybody what we're doing. Yeah. Thank um, you, Ms. Sanders. 
I'm I'm looking at the well. You all are looking at I guess well, we're we're looking at the website. I'm not really sure where that would fit, but Natalie, I guess you're the expert to figure <laughs> out because it it looks pretty loaded up here right now. But I definitely think that um, that arm needs yeah. to be attached under board policies or Would next you to that. Drop down? Is that what you mean, Dr. Hall? <laughs> another drop down out of board policy would be another drop down. Well, board it's board, board of policy of and then the, to the right is process. Yeah, here, so under board policy, in the drop down that it, that's this page you're looking at, right? there will be another drop down which will have those tabs that will be delineated by mom, so you can see each time. Right, okay. Yes. Like you said, with uh, the, the public comment yeah. meetings. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, moving back to item number 13B, action report for our curriculum. Ms. Hirsch. Okay, um, we're requesting that uh, Crete Moni High School um, be given the opportunity the second semester to implement an early out um, day once a week to work on curriculum and assessments. Um, Crete Moni High School is the only school in our district that does not have common professional time built into the teacher workday, and that time's critical for curriculum and assessment development, data analysis, instructional planning and professional development. Um, the proposal is that we release students one day a week at 1.15, which is an hour earlier than normal. It would be the first day of the week um, when that day is a full day of school. And the school would just simply shorten the, the, the class period so every class would still meet. It would just meet for a shorter amount of time. And that would allow our uh, departments and course teams to get together for that hour uh, to work on curriculum and assessments. Um, this is, um, you know, in, in educational practice, it's, it's commonly referred to as professional learning communities that do this type of work, and uh, the impact on student learning is well documented. Uh, we did some work with the bus company, and um, our superintendent um, worked with them very closely, and we were able to do this at no additional cost to run the buses uh, uh, an hour earlier. So we're recommending to the Board of Education to approve the early out um, proposal for the high school for the remainder of the 2014-15 school year. Can I have a motion to approve the Crete Moni High School early out? Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Anderson. Any questions? Yeah, there was a lot of questions. Laura brought this to the Ed Committee, and there was a lot of questions. At that time, she answered every one very clear and concise, and, and I felt pretty good about it after she answered all the questions, so I'm in definitely favor of this. I saw this PLC, Professional Learning Communities. I'm working on a project <laughs> with those same acronyms <laughs> all day to day. I'm like, okay, I see it again, but yeah, I'm good with it. I know in the committee we did say that. No, ma'am. We did say that um, there was a concern with starting this mid year. And my recollection of the conversation was to go back and pretty much survey parents to see what the consensus would be to um, invoke this change in the middle of the school year because we did discuss the fact that parents would have to make adjustments. Um, we did say that we fully support yes. the need for our teachers to collaborate, um, but there was concerns with doing this in the middle of the school year. Yeah, I think you, and, you was at the Ed Committee as well. I think that was one of the biggest showstopper, if it had to be a showstopper for me, about <clears throat> starting it right after Christmas, relatively speaking, as opposed to the beginning of Y15. One of the things that we did in, in preparation for this after the committee was to, um, Dr. Harden had his, I think it's called their PAC, uh, Parental Advisory Committee. They came in and they went over 
the impact and how the impact would be to get that information started out to the parents. We don't have every parent surveyed, but we do have our parental action, commi parental action committee that is in support of this, and we can continue to get uh, to seek other information as it comes in. But you know, the, the challenge of this is it's going to be an inconvenience for some parents, no doubt about it. Um, but when you take a look at how many parents are in your community, only about 20 to 25 percent of your parents are, um, are the makeup of the, of the community. And the parents are going to get the biggest bang for the buck in this because they're, we're going to get a higher quality education for these students. And one way to do it is, is this with the early out. The other way to do it is to pay the teachers additional funds uh, with uh, six, what do, we, what do we call them, six assignments or things of that nature. And what happens many times is our community is expecting us all to pitch in a little bit. This is, it's a challenge for the parent. I'm, I'm one of those parents that would be challenged. And, and so are you, Mrs. Sanders. But, what we're trying to do here is make sure that we're all pulling along together to get this done to improve our high school. Yeah. And that's why they've, they've come in this direction to come to us for this. Yeah, you know, I agree, totally agree. If you look at the issue, you look at that second sentence, and that says it all, and what is our mission, mission statement? We are in business to educate our kids. And it says the common prof <coughs> professional time is critical for curriculum and assessment development data analysis, instructional planning, so on and so forth. So that bullet right there kind of drives me that, yeah, there are going to be some inconveniences towards parents, so on and so forth, but the gain is the good outweigh the bad. That's a point uh, of clarification. I just want to make sure I understand correctly. So we're saying every Monday? Uh, we're saying every Monday then, is that correct? It would be every Monday except for three three dates because we have institute days. We have a Monday um, Monday holiday with an institute day following. So two of those dates would be Wednesdays, and then the last one would be on a Tuesday following Memorial Day. Okay, and outside of the, um, the uh, parent committee, uh, has any other uh, publications or anything sent out to the parents just to let them know that there is a possibility that this may be coming up? Has anything been said or publicized or anything? Well, we, when we gave it out to the parents that are in the prevent, uh, parental action committee, we didn't hide it. We didn't say, okay. don't go tell people. Okay. So I know the word is out, but it's not out officially. There hasn't been a letter written from the principal okay. out to the, all of um, the parents yet. Okay. But that is something that we were looking to do after we had come to the Board of Education. Okay. Mr. Cunningham, I, uh, I think, again, Mrs. Hirsch, it's a good idea. Uh, and there are a lot of good ideas. I do not agree strongly with we don't have time and we can't and that we're only allowing a small group. That's, that doesn't, that's not acceptable. Uh, we have enough time to inquire. That's not demonstrating a good level of transparency. We have enough time. We have the resources to um, ask more people about this process because it's not going to affect a small number of people. I, I don't even know where we would come up with that. It's going to affect a lot of people. And the other side of it is, you just said, Laura, that data has shown. So if we have data that suggests that this is proven, then uh, it should be easy to gain people's uh, buy-in because they will have the proof that you should see your child's improvement skyrocket because we're doing these kinds of things. I think we need to take it to the people we have communication. We, we cannot say, uh, uh, we've been doing that. Small groups make the decision, no more than people don't want us seven making the decisions because we don't, we, we, we're representative of people, but this small pack, what did you call it? Uh, parental, parental Action parental Committee. Advisory, advisory Committee, is, sorry. Is it consistent of parents who go to work or, or, you know, I mean, we have to be considerate of a lot of people. And I don't know, how many people are on your PAC committee, uh, Principal Harden? Please. They asked a question, but we uh, invited approximately 30. We had approximately 19 show up for the uh, Parental Advisory Council. Uh, they were very much in favor once we presented an understanding. We didn't want to say anything from a certain from a perspective of certainty 
because we didn't want anyone to feel as though we pulled the wool over their eyes. We are presenting information to them and letting them know the, uh, the, 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 the pros and cons. Similar to uh, just a few moments ago as Ms. Hirsch was talking about the, uh, the III conference and the PLCs, this is the exact same thing that we're trying to do. And we want to be as, as open and as transparent as possible because it's going to affect you know, a segment of the community. Um, and like I said, as we spoke about it with them, those parents were very much understanding. There was trepidation in the beginning, but as we discussed it, it was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things, I think, from a parental perspective, they don't understand uh, our, uh, the contract that's in place for the teachers. The easiest thing for the parents to say was, why can't the teachers stay longer? I was like, well, wait a second, just as you have rights, our teachers have rights you know, that they're governed by, the collective bargaining agreement and such. So uh, as, as I moved, as I saw the suggestion, or as I saw the need and moved it forward to Ms. Hirsch and, and the uh, superintendent's cabinet, of course we wanted to bring it to the uh, Board of Education for, for this kind of discussion and or uh, a, a approval and or denial or go back to the table. And from my perspective, I'm only speaking for James Harden, principal, I understand. I understand. And if, 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 if we need to talk about it a little more, we can certainly do that. Uh, I'm speaking way out of turn. I don't want to speak for anyone up at the table. I'm I have, I have. Hard. Uh, but, you know, finding a small representation, finding a good, a, a, a good cadre of parents to talk to this about, to try to take the temperature before we set the alarms off saying, hey, we need everybody, everyone come give us your uh, quick analysis of what it is we're trying to do. We thought having a, a smaller, cozier group will allow us to really talk about it, explain it, so that people will understand and try to move forward with that understanding as opposed to just setting off alarms with big groups. I, got a, I have two questions. Yes, sir. I've been listening very patiently. Um, if, uh, if there's a small percentage of parents that can't deal with it, do we can we put these kids in a lunchroom or something and and send them home at the normal time? Is, yes, sir. Is that an option? Is there someone available that can supervise them in a, either the gym or the cafeteria or whatever if it becomes a problem uh, if we implement something like this? Well, we've talked about it. And the buses will the buses agree to work with us? We've talked. To, we as an administrative group have spoken about a couple different options. Uh, one being having uh, an extension of our homework lab and having the students in the library working on some information, you know, working on their assignments and such. Uh, the other thing is we a have study hall. Or yes, sir. We have activity buses that will continue to run because we still have athletic programs, and those activity buses will be taking students home. Can I make a suggestion, maybe? And that suggestion would be maybe um, if there is any way possibly to, and you probably can't do it before we go on winter break. Um, uh, send out some information to the parents to let them know that there will be a conversation in reference to this. If they show up, they don't show up. You inform them that there's going to be a conversation in reference to this. Uh, kind of sort of see what the feedback is, then go from there. And worst case scenario, if we see that it's not going to fly right now, then plan on having it implemented for the 2015-2016 school year. Is that uh, possible? Because if you do it the way that uh, my colleague is saying, and you also have to involve the buses, and that's another conversation, that's another fee, and so forth and so on. So what if you did it that way, had a conversation? Let the parents know that this is something that's looking to be implemented. Give them the opportunity to come and have a voice about it. Uh, depending upon what the feedback is, make the decision from that point. And if it's something that we know that the teachers want and the teachers need, then just make it implemented for the 2015-2016 school year if it doesn't fly for um, right now. That's what my Mr. Suggest. Anderson, that's what the, the conversation was in the Education Committee mm -hmm. meeting. And I just have to say that that's what I expected out of that conversation. I really didn't expect to be voting on this. Mm. What I expected um, was for us to get what we requested in that committee. Um, Ms. Uh, Dr. Hardin, um, you say you had 19 parents and there was some trepidation in the beginning and you were able to thoroughly explain it to those parents and calm them down. What about the hundreds of other parents who haven't been afforded that conversation? 
to the degree where they would understand it and support it. Like I said before, totally support it. I totally understand that it's needed, but to blindside our parents even within two weeks, I know as a parent I could be okay with it, but I can't speak for other parents who may not be okay with it. My suggestion would be to go back to the table, give parents enough time to prepare for it. Two weeks is not enough time. Um, it, it definitely needs to be a conversation and a lot of informing. Uh, I agree with what Mr. Anderson is saying. If there's going to be some type of uh, meeting or something where parents can truly understand this is a change, because that's a major change mm -hmm. in our high school. And like I said, I support it, but parents need to understand why it's important and why you're requesting it. Um, I just think the timing is, is just not good. We have to give our parents enough notification to make those changes that they need to make in their families before we say pretty much every Monday your child is coming home early and it, it can potentially be a safety issue. We're releasing students earlier than what our communities expect them to be. They now would be walking the streets or driving earlier in the day. These are the types of things that we just need to be uh, more cautious when we're making those decisions. Like I said, I totally support it. I truly understand the need for professional learning com um, communities, um, but I can't support it right now. And one question. What are you gonna do with student athletes during that time? Well, we have a few different things. Uh, first, every student athlete is expected to be with their coach or a designee from that coach, someone within the program in a uh, study hall kind of environment for those that cannot get home. For the ones that can get home, it's our expectation that they are to go uh, home and return. It's the ones that can get home that you have a problem with. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't hear Those you. are the ones you're gonna have a problem with. Now, in all honesty, I've been through programs exactly like this. Mm -hmm. And the student athletes create a problem because they, especially the ones with cars, I'm gonna go home, well I don't go home. And the next thing you know, you got an accident. All right. It's I, and then you say, well, we're going to have a. Co they're going to have to be with their coach. Well, if it's perfect for professional development, it means that coach is denied the professional development. Well, the coach and/or a designee well, from that designee, program. If his designee is going to be a, a teacher or another coach, he's going to miss a PD. What I'm saying is, it's a lot more than what we've been given right now. Mm -hmm. I before I could even vote on this, I would like to see a detailed plan of exactly how it's going to be carried out. Okay, and we, we certainly have and will forward that. Um, as far as, and let, if, I, if I may, the, uh, from the Parent Advisory Committee meeting the other night, uh, the, uh, of the 19, there were two that were just a little cautious of it. The other parents in the room had been from systems that, from school systems in which they remember, oh yeah, we had early out, we had late start or something of the sort. And it's also something that I recently learned is not foreign to our district. I believe not long ago we did have a late start program in which was for the same purpose. And I very much understand the desire of the board. I will certainly work uh, at the uh, will yeah, of uh, superintendent and his cabinet to ensure that we put together what we need to put together. Um, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to point of uh, clarification from uh, Mr. Sanders. When I was saying a small amount, like 25%, I was talking about 25% of the community is made up as, a, as people who are parents. 75% of the people are, are not parents in, in our entire community. And we're looking for a way to be able for us as parents to share with them um, some more, maybe a little bit more pain than a little bit more tax. And we're looking for a balance. What you've pointed out here and what we will continue to discuss is, and, and to try to find information on, is we want to make sure everybody is informed before we step out into this. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree and I think we can get that done. We, we've started the process with the um, Parental Advisory Committee and we'll come up with other ways to do that. But I think it's important that we also say that it's, we need to have the interaction, the uh, collaboration between our high school teachers if we're going to take our kids to the next level. We've gotta find a way to do it, whether it's early out, whether it's um, 
late starts, whichever way it is, we have to find a way. And, and we're looking for this more as a pilot than as a done deal. When we came here, where we, we didn't know exactly how many dates that the, the board would want to uh, allow us to do. We want to do as many as possible, of course, but it, it's us trying to get this done in a manner so that we can continue to tweak the program and make it better before we start the full thing for next year. I see at this point, it sounds like just the pleasure of the board is not going to be approved. So we have a motion out there already, I believe. And if we do not act on that motion tonight to approve it, we're talking about January. If it was approved, January was going to be the start of the pilot program. So if it doesn't start in January, I don't see it happening this school year. I just can't see it happening in Can February. I get, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. Um, just from the board feedback on whether this is even an option for you all to start even mid second semester or is the desire to start at, um, at the beginning, the commencement of the 2015-16? Mm -hmm. I, I would say get all the ducks lined up, make sure we got all the questions answered and, um, and implement it uh, in, in May when, or June when they come back to school. That would I concur that also I believe we did have a, a motion and a second on the floor so we can go ahead and we can take it. Yeah. Okay. And we can reconsider, okay. yes. Uh, well, I think I made the motion. Yes. I think. Then I'll agree to table the motion. Uh, well. Under Robert's <laughs> rules, I can do that. <laughs> it's supposed to spell. Um, uh, Mr. Anderson, are you saying 1516? Yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Heisel? Yes. And I, Mr. Ture, you were saying 1516. 15. Yeah, it, next summer uh, when they come back from. I, I don't. Okay, we go ahead and. If it, if it flies with the community, I mean, you know, if the parents are going to be adamant against this, then we got to find another way to do this. I, I would like to see the survey question out there, ASAP, and find out what the feedback is, like we did with ROTC and and the other things we've done, you know, and if it comes back positive. You know, we, we write it right and spin it right, and it comes back with parental, parental, you know, approval. Then we work on the details, and we can implement it next spring. I, you know, as far as parent approval and the education committee, the parent approval um, inquiry was if they would support it starting in January. The fact that um, it's needed, I don't think requires parent parental approval. It's, it's something that, and I don't want to tie our administrators' hands if, if this is something, and I, we heard from the, the union president as well that um, at the education committee meeting that it is something that's needed. Um, I'm more interested in informing the parents and giving them enough time to understand that this is a way that we are moving. Not necessarily do they approve of it. Mm -hmm. sure. But like I said, the clarity of it was just getting their thoughts on starting at mid-year mm -hmm. um, was what we were looking to come back to the committee. So um, I, I'm in support right. of it if our administrators feel that um, it is something that's necessary. I don't see who would disagree with that. Our, our teachers need collaboration time. Mm -hmm. And this is a way to get it in, whether it is a late start or early release. Um, I just needed to know from the board, if, you know, what direction should we send our administrators back to I, be conversing? I, I, I agree with what you're saying to an extent, but I think we have to have the safety valve in place for those parents. And it's probably not going to be a large percentage, but the parents that absolutely cannot have that child home bef before the normal end of school period. We have to have a, an option, the study hall or whatever you're saying, in place, and, and give the parent the option to do that and, uh, and make sure that the busing company's on, online with us. And, and Tom's got a point with the athletes. You don't want them running around the community for an hour and a half. You know, it, we just put all these things in place so that we do this intelligently and not run into a, a Last comment on this. problems with parents coming to us saying, why did you do this? You know, 
And what, what can you do for my son or my daughter because I can't get back till 2.30 or whatever. Just, just have the contingencies in place and then, yes, I agree that teachers need the time. They should, they should have the professional development and they should be in there talking and all getting on the same page. So I agree with that completely. And, and we build that time in. I'd like to add another hour to the school day, personally, and not have to f fart around with this. You know, just add another hour, pay them the money, but, uh, you know, that's not going to happen. You know, maybe, but we are going to negotiate starting next year. Have, did you just consider a late start at all? I've spoken with, uh, spoken with various folks and looked at even the research. Um, from what, everything I can gather, I believe that for this community and this school, an early release will serve us much better than a late start. And then learning about what late start was in this community a few years ago, it wasn't as successful as, an early, as I believe an early release would be. I, I, I will say this. Um, I, uh, I, I, first, you hired a principal that wears tennis shoes. That says a whole lot about who I am. And a so, mean vest. <laughs> so I, I am certainly, I, I'm, I'm energetic and I'm always ready to move on something. I appreciate the, the feedback. I understand what, it's your, I understand what you're saying. I, I appreciate the support because this is supported. I see that. Mm -hmm. We'll just make it happen and we will do a better job of communicating mm -hmm. to our constituency to make sure that we're all on the same page and right. make sure that everyone has a good understanding it, it, of what it is. And if I can say this, Madam President, I want to re-clarify my statement, and that is I'm, I'm for the idea of doing either the early release or the late start uh, this school year if the parents are properly notified about the change and, and they're on board with it. If there's a lot of pushback or feedback from the parents in a negative way in reference to doing it now, then I'm for establishing it for the 2015-2016 school year. You know, I just, on that note, <clears throat> and this is all I have to say on this issue, we got to look at other opportunities, potentially other opportunities. We have the current contract for the teachers for CMEA that's going to expire, I believe, January, June the 30th of 2015. Okay, so there's some opportunities. I think the administrative, uh, Mr. Cunningham, you need to get with your team and see. We don't want to butt heads, but what we're trying to do now and what potentially could happen as the result of negotiating. I'll leave it at that. So I will charge you, Dr. Harden, as well as um, Mr. Cunningham, um, to do, do your research and um, come back to the board um, in a couple of months and sharing with us what you have um, computed and, and your supports and, and everything and we can have that discussion at that time where members agree. Yes, can I, I rescind my second oh, too? Go ahead. Okay. go ahead, Mr. Anderson. Can, can, can I rescind my, my second of the motion? This is a hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. So the only thing I wanted to add, Dr. Hall, in conjunction with what you said, is that when you guys, because this is not going to be the last time, bring something, you know, like this parent advisory group, because here again, we're representative of a constituent base. So if you've had a conversation with a certain segment of people, mm -hmm. it's no more than these hiring uh, situations where we've been on committees. We don't want uh, to be our decision to be reflective of a small committee. I don't care what it is, because when the decision is made, it's still gonna fly back on this end. We made the decision based on the information that you did or did not provide us with. So if you have a, P a PAC or a committee, uh, present some documentation that says we spoke to this many people, because had you not been here, I mean, I appreciate the additional information that you supplied, sure. but we need to know what it is that we're to make this decision on concrete information because it you know even if as dr hall said it's not going to be fully supported or everybody's clapping if it's something that we decide that we must do for the betterment of our students achievement then we're, we'll go forward and take the backlash or whatever has to be taken but at the end of the day here's why we're doing it not just because we flippantly said we're just doing it if you follow me i appreciate the wisdom i understand I appreciate the community wisdom. We'll get it done. Everything that you've asked. We'll have town hall meetings. Whatever it takes, we'll get it done. Thank you. 
Okay, can I have a motion to table the motion? Oh, okay. Was, okay. Sorry. So, hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so after discussion, Heisel rescinded the motion, motion That's to it. approve the early out proposal, mm -hmm. and Anderson rescinded the second. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So, there we go. So the um, the vote is tabled until. No, I don't. I I, I just the can't recommended information. No, I I don't see that. I don't see it being postponed or tabled because it may not even come to that point. I said take it back to your team. This let's is what I'm saying, yeah, mm -hmm. and you may not not even come back yeah. with this. So at it all. just falls so, off. Yeah. Yeah. So it's on the table, yeah. right? Okay. So it's gotcha. possible. Mm -hmm. Whenever. No rush. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward, student affairs, transportation request, Mrs. Spence. Okie dokie. Guys are in the mood for no, so let me take a stab at this one. See, Mary. See you as well. <laughs> Okay, uh, the district has identified the need for adding six additional uh, school buses for our regular ed transportation. As many of you are aware, since the start of the school year, we still have routes that are running upwards of 15 minutes behind schedule. Um, part of this is due to uh, our bell schedule and the time that we have to spare in between the tiers. The high school is the first tier. Tier two is shared by CSK, the middle school, and the sixth grade center. And then tier three is our elementary buildings. For some of our tiers, we have between three, four, six, and seven minutes to spare between tiers. Given the square footage of our district, it has been established that there's no way we can cover that with the amount of buses that we have. The original proposal, the transportation bid for the school year included a request for 46 buses. When we go back and look at some of our invoices from last school year with the other bus company, we had more than 46 buses. Uh, first student has already added additional buses for us, five additional buses, just to get us to the point where we are now, and we're still behind schedule. Uh, our fear is that right now the weather has been decent, but we still aren't into January yet, and we can predict that we may have some inclement weather, and if we're cutting it this close now, um, that it will be a major problem in the months ahead. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the transportation request as presented? Move. Second. Moved by Mr. Anderson, second by Mr. Heisel. Any questions? I, got, I have a question. Are, are we going to be up to, Monica, are we going to be up to the same level we were with the previous company now by adding the six buses? It will certainly help. I won't sit here and guarantee it, but it will certainly help. I, 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 don't think, I don't think you understood. How many buses did we have with the previous contractor? The, the contract called for 46 buses. The last year. When, last, last, year. Year. last year. How many do we have now? With this bus company? Yeah. We, 51. Okay. And what did we add that we need six more? They can't make the runs in time. It, um, they have to go drop off, let's say pick up at one school, make the run, and be back in 15 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And from one school out to the edge of the district and back takes about a half hour. So they just can't do it. Um, last year we did add buses, if I'm not mistaken, at the beginning yes, of the year because we had the same problem. Uh, and Basic, what it boils down to is, and if we're going to get these kids in and out of school on time, then we're going to have to have the extra buses. It was started this cost-saving measure to go down to 46 buses, and we saved money, but 
we got kids getting to school about 15, 20 minutes late. True that. So For instance, if you look at, there's one route, Route 259, and that route is shared by the high school, CSK, and Balmoral. There are six minutes to spare between the high school and CSK. There's no way that bus will ever be able to have a consistent on-time rate. Okay, and then they've looked at every possible way to do this more in, more more intelligently than, than let's, rather let's add talk buses, a, let's right? talk about that um we started out at the beginning of the year with a lot of issues i got calls from board members i got calls from parents um and there was no one happy especially me uh the challenge was for us was to figure out what the problem was and what we identified as the problem was 46 buses that we as the district had asked for in the contract. And what we did from there, and I reported to the board, was that we told the, the bus company that we needed to find a way to solve this issue. I needed the issue solved first, and then I needed them to come back to us to what would be the ultimate solution. Now they've done that stop gap, gap method. Of, of adding a few buses and trying to figure out exactly um, the most efficient way to do it. Our step now is we have to add these buses in order to guarantee the type of service that we should be giving to our district. Okay, just so I understand it, we, we currently have 46 or do we have 51? 51. We have 51, we're gonna add six more, we're gonna go up to 57. That is correct. So we're gonna increase the contract by 11 buses over to 46. That is correct. So that's about 20% increase, right? Approximately. About 150, 157. 157 grand taxpayers' yeah. money. So have we increased, what has changed from the previous bus company? Are the routes changed? Have we increased our population of students? Why were they successful or not they, they, well, they weren't successful they, right. <laughs> they, they weren't, weren't successful. successful and yeah. to tell you the truth like i just pulled um june's invoice from the last bus company i just took an invoice and pulled the last one there were 54 buses on that invoice they weren't operating off of 46 buses mm -hmm. okay and, and if i can just say to you just as an example uh for my children um uh, from the time that they're they are supposed to be outside, and the time that the bus actually shows up is mm -hmm. roughly 30 to 35 minutes. Right. So if they're supposed to be out, let's say at, at 8.15, uh, the bus doesn't show up to almost 8.35, 8.40. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's without inclement weather. Okay. So All right, sad. so. Um Okay, who's going to negotiate these buses next year? Because obviously we didn't do it right. It's not next year. We got who's 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 the who's the regular crew chief on this? I mean, you know, we got a twenty percent increase in taxpayers' money here, and and we did, and we obviously shorted ourselves by, you know, well, pound, penny wise and pound foolish something here. You Mon know, Monica, if you don't mind, <clears throat> Board Member Teray, he mentioned the increase. Could you just explain as far as the reimbursement as well? The reimbursement that the bus company gave us for? No, that we get from the state. Regarding oh, our transportation claim? Yes. So we do, at the end of every year, and it's been um, Dr. Williams' office, former Mr. Groose, who would do the claim, and we've talked about either it being a collector process or coming into the transportation department. But we do put in for a transportation reimbursement claim every year. Now, of I course, understand. it's the state, so we don't get back the full amount, but right. we get something. Whatever the state, back. in their infinite wisdom, uh, gives us. I understand that, but now let me understand further. We're going to, we got two more years on this contract. So we're going to add 157,000 this year. We're going to add 157,000 next year, and we're going to add 157,000 the year after. Correct? No, so we're going to, that is incorrect. How's that going to work? Well, if you're if you're looking at it the way that you're talking about, we're talking about really for a half year. So if you say 157,000 for a half year, that's 300,000 so for gonna, a full year. We're going to add a million. But let, bucks. let me let me finish as we go through. You know, we understand that this contract was made before. Uh, the administrative team got here and, and it was in place. What we have to do is make it work. 
and we've been working very hard with constituents that are not happy and kids that are here, there, and otherwise. It's our job for these next two and a half years to get it right and then to negotiate better when, we, when it comes up. We've got to fix it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not happy about what we have to do, but we have to fix it. Okay, Secretary, please call the roll. <laughs> All right, Mr. Anderson. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Heisel. Aye. Mr. Ture. I'm going to vote nay. I think we need to fix it first. Okay. Uh, so you are nay, nay or abstain? Nay. Nay. No. Okay. No. No. Okay. And secretaries, aye. Dr. Hall. Aye. Thank you. Human Resources, Human X Proposal. Most of this information was presented in the uh, Personnel and Finance Committees, uh, but just a, a quick summary. Uh, what we're seeking here is approval of the Human X uh, system, which includes essentially two parts. The first is the Style Profile Builder, which is an additional step in the application process. Uh, where candidates who are applying for positions in the district would answer a series of timed questions and they're designed to uh, help us identify whether the candidate exists, exhibits uh, certain characteristics and traits that we're seeking in the most desirable candidates. And uh, this is information that is uh, an additional piece of uh, information to help us in the selection process and it has been uh, highly successful and is uh, well researched as far as uh, the ability to find good quality candidates and to help in the selection process. Uh, the second, uh, that part would be implemented uh, immediately upon approval as soon as we could get, uh, get everything in place. The second part of the, uh, the proposal is to approve uh, the interview training uh, piece of this and uh, the information about that is included in the packet but uh, Again, it's uh, to make a process that's consistent and transparent and also provides uh, information specific to uh, our desired characteristics of our quality candidates that we're seeking. So uh, the recommendation is to approve the uh, Human X proposal that is in the packet uh, so that we can make that purchase. This is the one we talked about at the personnel meeting, correct? Yes. And we're going to train our own people, correct? They will, they will train, train the people, yes. And then we'll have a, a lot of people are trained on this, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay, may I have a motion to approve the Human X proposal? Moved. Moved by Mr. Anderson. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Ture. Any questions? I will say that, um, yes, this was uh, presented in the personnel As well as the finance. And as well as finance. And um, we discussed uh, if we have an opportunity to um, screen our potential employees in a more effective way. Um, it, it's something that, as a district who employs, well, we have over 400 teachers um, and other staff members, it is uh, on our part, you know, an effort that's being made that will help us to b pick the best people possible to put in front of our children. Um, so I expressed my support then and, and I still support. And I wasn't at the personnel meeting, but I extended my support and uh, Requ just, I, I'm a strong advocate for us to change the process that we currently have or lack thereof in some areas. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, as we've discussed, a step in the right direction for clarity, transparency, and a better process uh, that works and that makes us uh, look and appeal as a, a, a good organization with um, uh, standard practices and protocols and processes. So I think um, we need to embrace this and a few other things, but this is a good start. Okay, Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Ture. Aye. Mr. Heisel. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Heisel. Aye. Mr. Ture. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Heisel. Aye. M
Mr. Heisel? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Secretaries, aye. Dr. Hall? Aye. May I have a motion to approve a resignation agreement between the Board of Education and Linda Pete in the amount of $10,000 and with health insurance benefits in exchange for her uncon uncon unconditional resignation and release of any and all claims against the Board of Education? Moved. Moved by Mr. Heisel. Second. Second by Mr. Anderson. Secretary, please call the roll. Okay, Mr. Anderson. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Heisel. Aye. Mm, Mr. Teray. Nay. No. Okay, secretaries. Aye. Dr. Hall. Aye. Motion carries. Any old business? Any new business? New business, I have one thing. Uh, I would like to kind of piggyback on this uh, bus thing. I had a, a nice conversation with our early learning center, and uh, during the course of the conversation, one of the things that came out was we could support 40 more children if we could get the busing approved, okay? That's, that's a large chunk of kids. I mean, they have 200 or so now, 220, I think. And uh, they, could, they could increase that by 40 children if um, they could get the busing approved that apparently was taken away by a previous Board of Education, I don't know, four or five years ago. I don't know the exact date. One of the big cuts, I think 2010, uh, somewhere in there. That's a lot of kids that could get uh, a, a big boost for early education if we could bus them. I would like to talk about it and see if we can, you know, we obviously have a, <laughs> not the best busing contract and, and going on right now, and we got two more years with these people. If we can talk about something like this with the board first, obviously, if we can approve the kind of money, get figure out what it would cost to bring in 40 more of these young, young learners that, uh, you know, and changed change the whole pro the whole outlook of their life. I mean, it's a wonderful program we have there. It's making big money for us as far as education uh, for these young children. I brought something I'll share with uh, with Mr. Cunningham, and he can give make copies and give it to the rest of the board. There's about five pages of honor roll from all our schools, and. All the highlighted children are children that went to this ELC. And you can see there's a, a huge amount of kids here uh, that have uh, really excelled from at-risk children, which is what our early learning center is about, kids that are at-risk to honor roll students. And it goes all the way through the sixth grade here, these lists that I have. On, uh, I think it's a fantastic program, and I think we need to look real seriously on how we can get the money to uh, put 40 more kids in this class, into this school. So that, that's the new business. I'd like to put it on an agenda and may, perhaps to discuss it. I don't know what proper procedure, Robert's rules here, but I'd like to discuss it about with the board and uh, see if we can look at this. Well, we need some additional information. The reason it was cut back was because the state withheld funding for anything expect that except special education students who were in the early childhood program. And that was why the program was reduced. We simply couldn't bust those kids because there was no reimbursement for them. Okay, well, if we can have a discussion about it. I'd, Monica, perhaps you could look at it. I can certainly get me some feedback and we can go to the board and see what we got. How much it will cost, how many uh, buses we would need based on the areas that the children are coming from and a cost for you to look at. Right. And, I under, what, and the grants and stuff like that. I, I think we need to make sure we get this right. Um, if that's the pleasure of the board, what you're talking about is a kind of a change in the program and that change in the program should uh, start at the education committee mm -hmm. wherever we need to start talking okay. about it that's um, what i'm saying i just want to bring it up as new business if that's where 
the best place, sir, I'll be happy to go to all the education committee meetings. Uh, can I get um, asking to put it on an agenda or something? Uh, so we have a t it doesn't this is not a splash in the pan and it goes away because I you know I'd like to discuss it further because I think 40 kids is a lot of young young minds that we can really affect here. Tom, I'm sorry I didn't hear your response. Tom. To what? What, what was your response? I didn't hear what you said. Oh, no, it was no response. It was the reason the cuts were made originally was because the reimbursement for non-special education students was taken away by the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we didn't want it. We hated the idea of cutting the program, and we said that's why you. That's why you see all those cars lined up mm -hmm. out there every morning. It's mm -hmm. because there's no reimbursement for that. Before everybody came, you came on the bus. Mm -hmm. Right. So the question would be, even when you do bring it up, where do we? Uh, extract the money right it's not yeah. so much it, that it we is, don't it's want a monetary it. it's a monetary we know the issue monetary. It, but where do we and then that? if well it, it gets in, and i think that the education committee is a place for it to start mm -hmm. and and to collect all the data and find out what what you need to do yeah that's all i'm asking let's talk about it, see if we can do it no, you know and it was a challenge of and i'll say i personally i voted against it um but i will say that ELC has done an excellent job in making the accommodations um, under Paul Kovacevic as well as um, Kelly Chester mm -hmm. um, now, but it's definitely something, you know, we can look at and I agree too, it needs to start with the education committee. Um, Madam Mr. President, January. if I can also make a request of uh, Ms. Spence going back to the busing issue. Uh, once the changes are made, um, there's a possibility that you may have to send out reminders to the parents to let them know the time because, you know, I might be one of them. I don't want to send my child out later than what they're supposed to be out there <laughs> if the bus is coming their own time. time. Get right, right. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, and new signs for the buses. <laughs> we don't want your children out there. <laughs> right. No, no one want my children out there waiting. Reveille. The Reveille. It's 5, oh, 530. You know, I just one comment and. You know, obviously the EOC has done a tremendous job in causing our kids to learn. Uh, the, and by the same res respect of restoring such classes as gym and art and things like that that has a great impact on our kids in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we need to look at in this totality to try to restore in some way, shape, or form as well. I agree. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. Maybe we should have a um, restoration <laughs> session. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to jump in before you did to make sure that um, the administrative um, cabinet has been working on that. We have, um, we started in December with looking at ways to restore programs, um, ways to become more efficient and we plan to have a recommendation for the Board of Education. Uh, it won't be in January, but we're, we're, we're getting there as quickly as we can. It's gonna take us some time. We're looking at the programs. I don't think we really had included um, early childhood, but we were focused on um, PE, art, and music. Those are very important to us, and as, as it is to our community members, as it is to our teachers, and, and um, it's important for us to have a process and a uh, recommendation for the board. We will have something for you. Okay, thank you. Thank Can I have you. a motion to adjourn? Well, on new business, should we not have, uh, we already got the date set though mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. our committees, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I think Dr. Williams and myself for the finance committee that okay. Monday. The seventh. You got it? Mm -hmm. Great, you just, whoo. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Moved. <laughs> Moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Anderson. Second. What? Moved by Mr. Anderson. Second by Mr. Heisel. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Nay. All right, oh. we're, we're adjourned. Aye.